it's the holidays. What better way to celebrate the holidays than have a lot of kids around here with our great buddy Jack Hanna. And look at what Jack has, is that an alligator? It's a baby alligator, not even about four months old, everyone. Look at this. They're hatched from an egg, all right? The alligator is one of the most prehistoric animals on earth. This animal can grow to be over 12 feet long and over 1,200 pounds. They've come back very well in Florida now. They're everywhere. Speaking of alligators, Maury, let me show you an alligator. You won't believe this here. This, this is an alligator just about Oh, no, no, no. 12 years. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, there's, why isn't, why don't we have a wrap around his, his Because his, Dan, his... Dan Breeding's the one that raises this animal from a youngster. Now, you, everyone, we're not the crocodile hunter. We don't go around. He's a, he's a great guy. He knows a lot about alligators and crocs. He would do this. He'd know what he's doing. We don't, so. But this is a baby one here, as you can see. This is a large one. This one more, he's only about, this is only about seven feet long. Think of one about 12 feet long. Look at the, look at the, the mouth, all right? The crocodile is much more narrow, the snout. The teeth also on the crocodile go on the outside of the jaw, plus there's more ridges on the back. And then isn't it fatter? Is the crocodile fatter? No. Much bigger. Oh, bigger. The crocodile in Thailand that I saw was 22 feet long and 2,400 pounds. You can see their web feet, see that powerful tail. They lay eggs, by the way. They lay eggs. They're a very aggressive animal when they're guarding their nest. It takes about 40 days to incubate the eggs. But I've never had an alligator on the show that's not only this big, but also what one What are you that, doing there? What's he doing? He's just showing his eyes. He's got different eyelids. So when, when you think the alligator is sleeping, let's say, and you're on the golf course playing golf, and you think he's sleeping, go up and get your golf ball, your dog's out there, what they do is they take their tail, swat it this way, and turn their head at the same time. They swat you toward their head with their tail. It happens quicker than you can snap your fingers. Whoa, whoa. Manny. Yeah, Manny, he could eat that camera in a second. I'm just kidding, Manny. But <laughs> Manny's backing up. Ah, we love these animals. Yep. These are so pretty. Yeah, but Maury, we've never had some on that are only, look at this. How old are these? Four weeks, weeks Maury, look at this. The beautiful macaw. Beautiful? Now look at the color of these birds. Now Maury's seen the ones that are full grown. You've seen the beautiful blue and gold macaws from Central and South America. These are only four weeks. These birds can grow to be full size in less than four months, full size. This bird here can live to be over 100 years old. So you gotta have a home for that bird. They also have very powerful beaks. They can bite, so you got to be very careful when you get a parrot this big. Very good. Great. All right, now we haven't had this. We haven't had this one on in a while. No. Nope. And, and it's a, got a great name. I love the name. It's called a kinkachu. Exactly. My daughter Julie raises these at the Columbus Zoo. A kinkachu. A kinkachu. Remember where the macaw parrots are from? This Maury lives in the trees where the macaw parrots live. The kinkachu is called a honey bear. This was almost hunted to extinction in the 1950s and 60s, but they're a nocturnal oh, for animal. for pets. Right, for pets, and you don't want that. This animal's a nocturnal animal, has beautiful big eyes. It also has about a six inch tongue. This is from the Niobe Zoo, and they're a beautiful little creature that's also a pollinator as well. Thank you so much. Is so Isn't that nice. great? He is a beautiful Terrific. animal. Terrific. Thank you for bringing out the king of Okay. That's great. We're off this okay, way. now, this, uh, I don't know if we've had this one on before or not. It's called? This is a monitor. A monitor. This is also, we're back into Africa now. Oh, I don't think no, so. No, no, we've had different lizards on, but not yeah, a monitor. No. Is this a Nile monitor? I'm sorry. This is the one I saw more in Tanzania, not even four months ago. This is a black throat monitor lizard. This animal here has very, very sharp teeth. You've heard of the, the Komodo dragon? All right, some people think it's a baby Komodo. It's not, but this animal will eat like little rodents, mice, birds, anything it can find. These animals I've seen up in trees, way up in trees. Oh, they're very, very fast. On land, they can outrun anybody. I mean, it's amazing how fast these animals. They use that tail as a means of defense. This tail right here, oh, wow. This tail right here is like a, a razor blade on top. You ever been hit by one? Oh yeah, I've been hit on the leg by one, yes. Oh, okay. We can go ahead, I don't know if we'll run or not. Whoa. Whoa. You can get over there, Maury. Yeah, I'm not getting anywhere. You see those I'm, claws? Those claws back allow here. him to climb in the trees. See, see the tongue? He's searching all the time. You can put your hand out here. Just put your hand out here. Get, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that's called the black monitor. They also have the, uh, uh, the Nile monitor lizard, which is similar to this. So what have you got now? I enjoy it. These animals here, this is a, an animal you see in South America. We think of, that's right. This is a yellow-headed vulture from South America. It's a vulture. Look at those wings, Maury. Look at those wings. That allows the animal to soar. It can soar for almost 12 hours without ever moving its wings at high altitudes. From Bush Gardens down in Williamsburg, they have a beautiful, uh, magnificent bird show How there. How high would you spring. think it could go? Oh, this animal is, is thousand up. thousand feet? Oh, no, more than 5,000, 6,000. Notice, the, notice the, the talons. Now, if this were a bird of prey, 
Rob could not hold this animal. It would go right to his bone, those talons, all right? A vulture, an animal that cleans up after other animals have eaten. That's what this is. Not a bird of prey, all right, as far as a, a bird of prey like a hawk or an eagle. Very Thank good. Thank you, Rob, for Bush Thanks, Gardens, Rob. Williamsburg. Thank all you right. very much. Okay. Here's the next clue for the next guest. Who? Who? Right. Who? Who? You now mean what I went who and he thought that there was another okay. owl around? Now what Dan has here, shh, everybody, shh. the owl is found on every continent in the world except Antarctica, the owl species. There's no other animal in the world found on every continent except Antarctica. Dan has a great horned owl. See the horns there? Even though his ears aren't there, his ears are over here. That's how he can locate each other. This owl can find a mouse in two hours by just listening and hunting in total darkness. Dan wears a glove because these have talons, unlike the vulture, okay? That's the difference. The owls go from the, from the, uh, the beautiful uh, the, the Eurasian eagle owl, huge animal, down to the smallest owl, like a little teeny screech owl. There are about 17, 18 different types of owls throughout the world. Okay, now, now, now here we go. Yeah, oh yeah, here's our present. Here's our present right here. Let me see what we have in here. Oh my gosh, what's this? What is this, Oh, everybody? look at these. Look at this. Does anybody know what this is? That's right. This is a three-banded armadillo. One, two, three. Armadillo has very poor eyesight, but it has excellent, I mean, put the AA batteries in, he should go somewhere. There he goes. To me, <laughs> it all Brazil, comes. Paraguay. Look at these, all... I've never seen these. Man. Whoa, 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 you're dropping, dropping. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay, God. that's okay, that's okay. I'm sorry. Oh. It's, it's amazing. There How goes. they protect themselves. They have nothing more to protect themselves than going into their shell, right? Yep. Huh? And that's what they dig holes. Look at this. Every time they get scared, they go into their shell. Well, not even, this was not even really scared. He just, he's an animal just for, for protection. See there? Very hard shell. Very, very prehistoric. Again, everybody. They eat like little worms and insects. And they can dig a hole underground. They can actually hear underground about three inches. This animal's been around for tens of thousands of years. These two here, more, I, I swear, I've never seen one of these. I've seen a non banded, but not six banded. And these are, by the way, when you see these down again at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, you'll love these animals. Look at the hair on them, Maury. Look yeah, I see. He can something? use a shave. Can you imagine these animals, a giant armadillo, the big prehistoric armadillos were like 800,000 pounds, incredibly big animals. Thank you so much for okay. bringing those up from Bush Gardens. All right. Beautiful animals. This is yeah. one of my favorites, the one of the most beautiful. Yeah. Do you know what this is called? You know what this is? It's a leopard. That's right. This is one of the rarest cats in the world. This is the clouded leopard that Laura's raised at Columbus Zoo, the clouded leopard. This is a member of the Species Survival Plan for American Zoo Association. This is one of the rarest cats in the world. There may be about 350 in zoological parks throughout the world, and we don't know in the wild. There might only be 100 left in the wild in Asia. The clouded leopard, look at the legs, Maury. Look how different this cat is. Why are there such short legs? Because he lives 90% of his life in trees, 90%. They have the longest canine teeth of any cat in the world. Over two inches long, the canine teeth. That long tail is used for balance. This coat, Maury, is sold on the black market for over $80,000. 80, not eight. And that's why it's almost gone going into extinction. Look at that beautiful, look at the, the whiskers allow this cat to hunt almost in total darkness. Isn't that a magnificent feel that, Maury? Just, you, you wonder why people kill the animal for its coat? It's as soft as you can imagine. And they call it a clouded leopard for that beautiful cloud that's on his coat. So it's a tragedy what's happened to this animal. Okay, so here's our last Tommy animal Sue. of this segment. It is the star of Caddyshack. It <laughs> is a ground hog. Right, it's an animal that lives in the ground, obviously digs holes in the ground. You may be careful if you're riding horses, or like Maury might lose his golf ball in there or something like that. But I want everybody to see a ground hog because it's now winter, and we'll all know when spring gets here when he comes out of his hole.